Hi, I'm Andrew Berry, and welcome to At The Benches YouTube channel. Over the past few weeks, I've had a couple of emails and messages asking me what type of tools that I use for measuring. On our films on At The Bench, that's our online jewellery training website, atthebench.com, you may have seen me use different gauges to measure dimensions, measure the, the, the dimensions of stones, the depth of stones, and so forth. And I've had a few messages asking, well, well what are these called, and, and can you show us a little bit more? So I have in front of me here some measuring devices. Everybody knows the simple plain ruler. Stainless steel, preferably get a stainless steel ruler. It's gonna last you a lifetime. This is a 12 inch one. This is through 300 millimeters or so. Um, very handy. Sometimes it's not really practical if you're coming to use, use it for small pieces of metal, but for measuring long lengths, bangle lengths, etc. Absolutely brilliant. We have metric on the one side, obviously imperial inches on the other and also a six inch version as well. Metric on one side, imperial, the inches are on the other side. I tend to, I use the six inch, the 150 millimeter a lot more because it's more manageable upon your bench here. Stainless steel, you, it's very hard wearing material, but you do have to make sure that you don't drop the ruler on its end. If you do, you're going to dent this nice straight cut end that we've got. And this is important to keep this end nice and not to say protected, but look after this edge that you've got here. If you do happen to drop it directly down, whether it be on a bench or carpeted floor, tiled floor, laminate floor, you're gonna dent it. And if you dent these edges here, when you come to lay out your designs by using the end of your ruler, or if you use a pair of dividers, it's gonna be inaccurate because you've bashed the end in basically. So if you've got a ruler that's quite a few years old and you can't trust the accuracy of the end, I would always move in 10 millimeters or one inch and do your measurements from there. But remembering to add on that one centimeter onto your measurements or the one inch and so forth. Brilliant, ideal, most everybody should have a ruler. Now, a lot of the other devices that I use, <clears throat> um, I years ago, not long after I started, I spent a lot of money on this type of gauge. This is called a leverage gauge, and its primary use is for measuring gemstones. It's got the dial down here, this is in millimeters. You can buy these also in a millimeter gauge that are a lot, lot cheaper than what I paid for this. I paid an astronomical amount of money, so 20 years ago, 20, 25 years ago. This is close to about 400, 450 pounds then. A lot of money, but nowadays you can buy these millimeter gauges are exactly the same as what this is. The advantage with this is when you're measuring stones and small objects where these sort of tools are going to be a little bit inaccurate, is you can pull this thumb piece down here. And as you pull, let me do this way, as you pull this thumb piece down, you can see the needle spins around the dial, and the further you pull this down, the further this needle goes around the dial, and so forth. Which means that I can grab a gemstone, simply put it into the gauge, let go, and I can read off on here, this is 11.9 millimeters in width. Very easy. I can turn that lengthways, put it in place. That now is 16. So we've gone round once, that's 10. It says on the red dial here, and onto the six here, that's 16 millimeters. So ideally it's a 12 by 16. And the other advantage is that we can measure the depth of stones as well, which again is very important. And the depth on this stone is 6.3 millimeters. But the advantage with this is it has an inside and an outside um, gauge as well. 
So you can measure perhaps the inside diameters of settings, inside diameter of tubes, by simply using the end pieces that we've got here. And you can measure the inside diameter. Brilliant if you want to know what the inside diameter of a, of a, a setting is. You can easily put your stone in place. Let's get this little amethyst I've got here. And say we wanted to work out the diameter. That comes in at seven millimeters. Sorry, uh, eight millimeters, sorry. And now, so this diameter, is eight millimeters, but this distance from here to here is also eight millimeters. So I can come along and work out exactly what inside diameter, or I can scribe it along a length of silver. But the other trick with this is, it has these gauges on the end as well here, these little pointed rods. These are brilliant for measuring stones that are already set into rings. Providing you can gain access to the underneath, that will go inside the setting like that, and that will rest upon the culet of the stone. This gauge rests upon the top, so now you can read the depth of that stone, 2.6 millimeters. Impossible to do by any other method. You could sort of gauge it, you get your ruler and measure, it's not gonna be accurate. To measure the depth of that stone, you'd have to take the stone out by using any other gauge. But by using this particular gauge, we can measure the depth very, very easily. I love this particular piece of equipment because I can put a stone into place, then I can get my burr, and I can put my burr in between, and I can work out then whether my burr is gonna be too big or too small for that diameter of the stone. And I can do exactly the same thing on these digital calipers I've got here as well. I've got two different types. This one is my favorite. This measures uh, five, in fact, four inches, 100 millimeters. I love this to bits because it turns itself off. I don't have to remember to turn this device off. And again, we've got the ability to measure down here and also the inside my dimensions you can measure with this as well. You can read this off in inches and also in millimeters. I love this because it turns on as soon as you start to move it. You can come along, you can zero it, you can bring it along to you know, 9.26 for instance, and you can zero it and measure a bit further. And it's a really wonderful piece of equipment. You can use it for, for instance, for argument's sake, say you want to make a strip of metal that is say seven millimeters, Measure seven millimeters or 7.02 as we've got on there. And then we can simply drag the legs of these calipers along our silver and we can scribe a beautiful parallel line without even having to get our dividers out. I love this, this is brilliant. One of my favorite pieces of equipment. It's digital, works by a battery. And as I said, it turns itself off, which is brilliant when you get to my age and you forget things. This particular little guy here is pretty much the same sort of size as my leverage gauge, and it's got pretty much the same arrangement on the top here. Again, this is primarily for stones. You can measure the diameter of the stones by using this. You can measure the inside dimensions of a tube or a setting, and also the depth of stones if they are mounted in this particular area here. My only problem with this one is, well, it does work, it's uh, the fact that I keep forgetting to turn it off. You gotta turn it on, you gotta turn it off. Again, it's millimeters and inches you can work with, which is again, which is ideal. You can zero it exactly the same as this one here. And also you can turn the little knurled nut on here to keep it locked at a set size. I love this, I love this for its sheer um, portability, it sits in the hand really nicely. The biggest dimension you can use, you can measure on this is in the region of 26 millimeters. It is brilliant, but it doesn't turn itself off. So I often have to replace the batteries every couple of days on this. So this is not my go-to measuring device. If I'm up here in this workshop, this is my go-to measuring device. My 100 millimeter, four inch digital calipers. Love this to bits. Downstairs in my other workshop where I'm often, often measuring stones and so forth, I use my leverage gauge. These aren't that expensive. I'm not quite sure. This is about £30, £40 I think maximum. 
it's digital, so it doesn't really wear itself out. You have to replace the batteries. Always make sure that when you bring the jaws back together, mind you, that it is always set to zero every time. And it usually is when you turn it, the item on. My favorite. All right, there we go. A very quick film, just showing you the different types of measuring devices that we use here in our workshop and also in our studio. My name is Andrew Berry for At The Bench's YouTube channel. Thank you for watching. See you on the next film. Oh, don't forget, please, if you like this film and you haven't done so already, love you to subscribe. Leave a comment in the section down below. I'd love to read everything that you have to say. So in the meantime, until the next film, bye bye.